So, what are the measurements I've been getting? Well, they range from uh, 47 up to megohm, up to 1000 megohm per square. <laughs> That's a huge difference. Now, the original quad surface resistivity, they all range from 47 up to around about 170 megohm. And uh, the uh, newer panels, the, these are the ones that have the serial numbers uh, QBC or QHC, base and uh, high, uh, obviously. All the earlier panels just had a Q uh, prefix, or earlier than that, just simply uh, numbers. For example, I have one here, 12,793 on its own. That's an early one. And uh, then I have a, a Q, which is from my, uh, the quad I bought in 93. So that's Q 029364. So, and then the latest panels that I've been getting uh, and the ones that are in my uh, 2912, as I say, have QBC or QHC uh, prefixes in the serial numbers. And once again, with six numbers, for example, QHC 023893, with uh, once again, six numbers. So they seem to like their six numbers apart from the early ones. But the interesting thing is that the, uh, my original quote from 93, all of the uh, resistivities are in the range uh, less than 100. They are typically around about uh, 60 to 80, uh, 50 to 80 megohm per square. And only one of them is uh, over 100. So what do I make of that? Well, I don't know. Uh, now my original quad, all the uh, diaphragms are actually in good condition, those eight, those eight panels. So is it worthwhile redoing them all for the, for the sake of some resistivity? Um, I, I may just try and uh, fix all the stators and, and put them back in and, and uh, see how it goes. I suspect it will still sound okay, even though the resistivity is uh, not uh, what I thought it would be. But I, I will re-measure those uh, when I rig up a better resistivity uh, uh, probe set up. But I suspect it won't be out by a lot, maybe 30% at, at worst. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that this will be uh, in the, in the realms of uh, what I'm looking for. Now those eight out of that uh, original pair, all the stators are all loose, flapping around. And uh, what I have done in the past is I've uh, strung it upside down and with uh, little hooks and weights, I've, I've pulled the diaphragm down and, uh, and glued it from underneath using polyurethane and and it works quite okay uh, but it's it's real fiddly and I, I, I can show that in a later video how I did it but considering that the whole eight of them are, the diaphragms are in good condition I I may actually try and do that uh, and uh, that would save me a, a lot of trouble uh, restretching and uh, putting on new diaphragms. If the uh, if I feel that um, it's not up to sensitivity or with a signal or something like that, then I, I may consider uh, taking them out again and uh, and somehow redoing the uh, the coating on the diaphragm. I, I'm not sure how I would go stripping the old one off and uh, putting a new one on. I, Mm, story for another day. 
However, <clears throat> that's the original pair. All the others I have are all over the place. The measurements I've been getting for most of the early ones are fairly low in the uh, 30 to 70 megohm. Oh, okay, average 58 or 47 megohm. The new ones uh, seem to have an average of about, oh, about 150 megohm, which perhaps is uh, ideal or as it should be. Yes, 133 is my average. So perhaps that is what I should be aiming for is uh, in the region of 150 megohm. Now I have recoded two panels in the past using the ER audio solution. One of them, um, it, it seems to have uh, infinite resistivity. It's possible that that's not one I did. It might be actually from a, a previous repair by somebody else. So, but one I did do myself, I actually uh, it averages at one one thousand mega per square. That's one gig, which is really high. But it's possibly uh, once again within the uh, within the, uh, the the realm. As I said, the uh, resistivity that quad so suggest is anywhere between uh, 100 mega ohm and uh, and a thousand mega ohm, which is of course one gig. So, yeah, maybe that uh, that was fine, but I have to redo that one and uh, the other one with the uh, infinitely high resistivity because the diaphragm is just too loose, not enough tension. And uh, that was what was it, it came back for. So uh, there's always something. I shall do a simple test for you. Um, here we have the, the two coins separated by the one coin distance. Goes into this meter. And it's set on 500 volts. So press the button. Forty-eight mega. What I have been doing is going. That's the two gig two gig ohm range. I've also been going down to the two hundred mega ohm range and testing it again. And uh, ideally, it should be the same. But it's not always the same. So, what voltage do you believe? And and what range? So. That's why I have my concerns about this particular device. I, I need to do some more measurements. Now if we go to a thousand volts, the two gig range, 99, go to the 200 meg range, let's see if we get a hundred. hundred and twenty eight sorry twelve point eight so such a huge difference uh, just by the range on this thing that's that's what has me concerned about the accuracy of this anyway um, you get the idea and uh, I will uh, hone my testing procedure to be a little bit more accurate as time goes by now this particular panel is uh, is the one that had the really bad burnout and for some reason this panel its resistivity seems to be all over the place um, as you just saw other panels it's actually amazingly uh, consistent across it depending on the voltage and the uh, the range on the meter so so i'm suspecting that uh, there's lots of issues at play here and uh, this particular panel is a really bad example, but that's that's how you 
I go about it and uh, I will hone the procedure and we, we shall see in uh, a later video when I have my testing honed I will uh, give you part two. Alright, we'll see you then. Bye.